Hi all. Uh, welcome back to another session on uh, web methods. So in this session, I wanted to uh, show how uh, REST uh, API descriptor works and what's the significance of it in uh, web methods on-prem. Yeah. So let's start. So I'll be using the same example as uh, before. So here we have used the same for uh, URL alias example, right? So what I'll now do is I'll create a REST access descriptor. So click on new REST API descriptor, sorry. And keep it as add, add, next. You can use Swagger API or Open API. So I'll be using the Swagger for this example. And I'll be using the existing REST resource. We can also create Use array resources using the Swagger document. I'll show you how that can be done after this example. Keep it as lens. Next resource and finish. So this will create all the details, your host name details and the rest URL I mean, uh, REST resource, what are the outputs for it, and what's the significant security definitions, if any, and most importantly, the Swagger. You guys have already seen my previous videos why we use Swagger and all. So uh, the Swagger is used uh, as a documentation, or you, in short, you can say that it can be used for creating uh, APIs on the API gateway. So once we use this uh, Swagger, uh, document we can create apis on the api gateway and we can uh, once we apply all the policies and activate the api we can use the api gateway url to call our api on the integration server so it's like we are adding one more layer on top of uh, our api by uh, creating a swagger file so yes so let's now see how this can be called what i'll do is i'll copy this this was our example. Here, I'll just call Brad. Copy. And Brad. For calling a REST API descriptor, you need to input a Rad here. And then call this, so which internally calls the uh, uh, the rest resource that we need. So what I'll do is I'll just 1000 in this 100. See, now what happened? It has called our uh, rest API descriptor, which in turn called our uh, rest resource sitting inside it. Now we can still apply the, uh, what do you say, the uh, URL alias on top of this. How do we do it? I'll just copy this thing and copy and uh, name it as add our old friend and go to settings URL alias add and this and that's it we are good to go save it and say 600 sorry was that 700 and 300 you need to get it as 1000 see this is how you can create REST API descriptor and then call the uh, uh, REST resource from it. Now, I was also saying that we can create the uh, REST resource from uh, using the Swagger file. I've copied this anyway. So what I'll do is I'll delete the folders, these three. Now, what I'll do, I'll just click click new and just create REST API descriptor and say it has add in rad. Click next and I'll use swagger here. In the previous example, we use the existing REST resource, but we don't have anything here. You can click swagger, click next and finish. See, 
this has created a dense resource in your service. So it creates everything. You just need to write your uh, services in this. And similarly, your details here. If you wanted to change the name of this default, so what I can do is you have an option called to refresh. So what I'll do just here is I'll keep post in post. Say tags colon. That's it. So this is done. So let me refresh this rad. Look for it. And refresh. Okay. So I'm going from the same source. I'll say no. It is refreshed. Now if I go to my descriptor, see? The name got changed. Previously it was a underscore default. Now it got changed to add-ins and this is add-ins rad. Yeah, add-ins rad. So once we got this add-ins created, we can change the uh, service name here. So I'll just change uh, it as add-ins. Let's say update usages. And in the add-ins as usual, I'll see, see we are getting these values, right? So I'll just call the PubMath add-in service here. And once the mapping is done, I will map the value to this thing. And at the end, I'll say, Set response to content type is text slash name. So this is how you uh, create the, uh, I mean, uh, resources using the swagger file so what i've done till now so i've taken the swagger file which we have created previously and then generated the uh, uh, resources and added the service details like what i wanted to call inside it and then let's see how we can call this so it's same thing again I'll go to and first I'll call it like this and then later on change the uh, URL alias. And slash, yes, slash add ins. This is how we created. Only change we see here is here we are saying that uh, it could be the this could be the for form data and it it consumes the URL form encoded. So you can even change that. So some logic needs to be changed. Like let's say here. Let's see what the input will come if we use uh, post and that if uh, <clears throat> as per my experience as i know what this the data will be coming under when you use the uh, post method here right and if you're sending the json content here the data comes as underscore generated input and these values as key value pairs in that so right now it will throw an error but if we go and Debug this and see, right? Okay. 
is coming underscore generated input when you use uh, the JSON content to be sent in raw format. And uh, let's suppose if you are sending in uh, X URL encoded format, what will happen? you send it as uh, <clears throat> form data like this x url encoded format you will just get the num1 num2 uh, value pairs here. so now if i go here click restore and save debug as It is coming directly as num1 and num2 if you are using form URL encoder. That's the difference. So in order to satisfy both the conditions, we can do it like this. So what I'll say is it's just coming as it document if sit you are good to go like say if you wanted to use use post here so let me Change it back to save. See, 700, 300 is 1000. 1000 in both ways, it does work. So, what I have did in this, this is like I'm <clears throat> saying that, okay, if I'm getting the data as JSON format, take it as uh, from the underscore generated uh, input document and map it to the uh, my output structure. I mean, the variables and do the processing there. So now that is done. Now let's say, now I'll, what I'll do is our favorite one, which is like the add one. I don't want that customer to know that, okay, I changed it my end. I want you to change. So here I'll go I'll just change. to add, save changes, come back here, and add. See, this is done. And this is done. This is how you play around with, uh, uh, play around with this uh, RAD, which is REST API descriptor. Thank you.